The best of the world of luxury and tech, all packed into one show. A very warm welcome to a fresh edition of Aspire. I'm Vikram Oza. Here's what we've lined up on the show this time. What does it take to create a successful beer factory? We're heading to Bangalore to find out. It's the age of wearable tech, lots of it in the market. We're telling you about smartwatches and how they stack up against our fitness bands. There's luxury that you can walk on. We're talking about rugs that can adorn your living spaces. Now, not in the middle of the day do you actually hit a pub, but here I am at the beer club in Bangalore doing just that. Here I am to understand what it takes to create a successful microbrewery. It's all about crafted beer and the way the Bangaloreans do it. This is the first pub of its kind that came up in the city and I'm about to meet the brother-sister duo that started things off. Let's go meet them. Most people say beer is a man's drink. Well, think again. Think Egypt and places around it more than 5,000 years ago, where women made ale-style beer. Closer in time, about 150 years back, Germany became the birthplace of microbreweries as we know them. In India, the concept of handcrafted beer arrived in the period of the Raj. With this, the first microbrewery in Kosoli, producing lion beer. But now India has about 20 microbreweries. Not a huge number, but the majority of them are clustered in Bangalore. After the first two that came up in Gurgaon, the third one in 2011 opened its doors in the Garden City. At that point in time, when you started off, there were two microbreweries in the country, just two of them, and both of them were in Gurgaon. You were the third one to set up shop and the first in Bangalore. Yes. From then to now, What's the shift that you've seen? In, in a span of three years, uh, at least the well-traveled lot, the, all the expats in the country, you're catering to everybody, right? A lot of people are aware of what the market has outside of India, uh, what more one can offer as far as craft breweries are concerned. They're constantly comparing the establishments in India to what they've seen outside. Um, so in order to cater to an audience such as that and be successful, you can't discount anything, whether it's the location, uh, whether it's the decor that you know might bring people back again and again to your establishment. And then last but not the least, your product, right? The beer that you serve, the food that you serve with the beer because a person is coming and needs full value for money. There's, there's a lot of uh, focus on uh, beer and food pairing. So, um, you know, the F&B team that you hire, the brewer that you hire, uh, and you know, constantly sort of innovating what you're doing. You know, when we started off, that's what brought in a lot of people. Everybody wanted to see what's going on behind behind the bar, what's going on in those tanks, and what's coming out of those tanks. Today, you have five offerings on the house, right? And how do you make sure that they are different? We as a team sit down and discuss flavors with our brewer. Sure, my brewer comes with 22 years of experience and he's been around the world brewing. He knows his recipes in and out. But uh, when we started Beer Club, all of us sat down and said, hey, you know, we're in Bangalore. Uh, we're going to start off beers with flavors in them. Uh, and it's summer, right? So what is it that, we, that we're going to offer to our customer? Um, and so we constantly, so that was in the beginning, but constantly we're sitting with our team and saying, what more can we offer? And in fact, you tasted our mango beer. Yes, I did. We started a couple of years ago and people every year wait for mango beer and they ask us, you know, when is your mango beer out? You get the nose, you get the taste, you get, you know, it's just like wine. Uh, which is why we said, you know, we have to elevate the status of beer on par with wine. You're creating a lifestyle around beer. How far are we, uh, Minakshi, from a day where we're going to enjoy beer for beer? I think uh, in Bangalore, from what I've seen, uh, I think we're there. At the end of the day, after a hard day's work, people want to go chill out and have a drink before they head back home. Do you think the market is... Uh, going to be able to take in more microbreweries and uh, do they each need to come with a certain theme or can you have your products do all the talking for you? Uh, a theme always helps but I think to start with because microbrewery is still at its infant stage people are coming here for the beer and saying okay let's go see what their beer is all about um, and um, I think in that sense yes the market is hungry for more the, um, many many more microbreweries are going to do brilliantly well I think What's taking time is the government policies, uh, but otherwise I think there's a huge market uh, yet to be tapped. Uh, you came in at a time when there weren't enough. 
Now there is going to be increased competition and so going ahead is going to be that much more challenging. Uh, how do you think, uh, you know, you're going to be able to face up to that kind of challenge? Do not compromise on quality. Uh, you know, make sure the product that you're serving is the best. You don't compromise on quality and invest in a very good brewer. I think that's, that's the key here. So how is it all made? How complicated is the process? How tough is it to get the right equipment? Time to get familiar. So this is the real brew house that I understand because we saw the water tanks over there. Right. The entire process actually takes on over here. Yes. Where yes. beer is actually crafted. Absolutely. Tell Absolutely. me more. So this is what is called the brew house. Uh, I would call it the heart of the brewery. Uh, once our malt, uh, once the barley is milled in our milling room, uh, it then gets transferred here where it's cooked with water. So that's where the water is coming from, right? So it gets cooked to the point where it's ready to add what is called as hops. Hops is what gives bitterness to the beer. And once it's then cooled down, it's then transferred onto the fermenting tanks. Uh, to ferment it, we add yeast and then the brewer actually goes and controls even the carbonation uh, to get all the froth right and things like that. And each style of beer takes uh, anywhere between 15 and 30 days to get fermented, right? So it depends on whether it's a lager or a wheat or a stout or an ale. Um, it takes different uh, number of days. Once it's all ready to be tapped, it's then transferred onto a storage tanks uh, and then your beer is ready. Right, and that's when you start... Absolutely, chugging your beer. Chugging your beer, that's exactly what you do. But yeah. you know this entire process, how true is it to the way it was originally done? When beer used to be brewed inside homes and women actually used to do it. So obviously those methods were very primitive, they didn't have, so this is automated to a certain extent, right, to a great extent. It was all done very manually 4,000 years ago when women started brewing beer at home. Uh, now obviously you see all these big vats around, it's more automated, you're, you're, not, you're not lifting barley uh, on your shoulders and putting it, you know, into a milling machine and then lifting the whole, uh, you know, mash and bringing it into a tank and, you know, cooking it in the open. You know, when you're trying to churn out quality, Absolutely. where do you head? So uh, we did a lot of research on equipment as well. So there's China, there's, there's Europe, there's even US. Uh, you know, the company is making equipment. There's even a lot of players in India that have started making equipment. So if you want to cut down costs, there are, there are many options. You could get uh, manufacturers in India that can actually customize equipment for you, but you'd have to then give them the entire design. Your brewer has to drop the entire design and give it to them so they manufacture your tanks as per your uh, specifications. But the kind of uh, raw material also that goes into it, you're talking about uh, the hardware, but really what goes into that hardware is also very crucial. Do you get that quality stuff over here or do you have to import it all the time? All the stuff that goes into beer, most importantly barley I would imagine. Absolutely. So we uh, at the beer club import all our equipment. Uh, our malt, hops uh, and yeast, all three come from uh, outside. It's all tested. You know what's going to come out of these raw materials and what's going to come out of this equipment once you've made your recipe. Um, it's not always about your recipe might be a hundred percent but I think it is dependent on your equipment and on your raw material for the final quality to run out of that tap. Well, we've just come out celebrating the Oktoberfest at the Rio Carnival. Big congratulations to Germany for taking home the World Cup. And of course, as far as beer is concerned, Germany has to be the destination of the world. With that, uh, let's move on and tell you about what's buzzing in the world of luxury. Expect the Germans to keep chugging their beers in celebration until Oktoberfest. The first tents have already gone up in Munich, but even as the winning team takes home a bonus of 300,000 euros each, they also get Dr. Dre's 24 karat Beats Pro headphones and dapper Hugo Boss made to measure suits. Art at a click. Auction giant Sotheby's logs in to online shopping portal eBay. The partnership lets you click on to live Sotheby's auctions of art, antiques, wine, jewellery and watches. Talking of which, three timepieces caught our eye at the Jegele Cool stall at Masterpiece London 2014. The master grand tradition Gyro Tourbillon 3, made with over a hundred parts yet weighing less than a gram. And boy, what a dial! Then a Sphero Tourbillon for the first time in a pocket watch, the duo maître Sphero Tourbillon. And this tribute to the Art Deco movement, the Reverso Cordonné Neva. The diamonds like the Russian river Neva in winter.
Then here's some innovation. Hermes and Pilot pens create Nautilus. These capless pens with a rhodium plated white gold nib. And while most women have always loved this, the Fendi Peekaboo, now men get their own version. For leisure, by all means, and work if you can carry it off. With that, we take a little breather here on this edition of Aspire. When we return, we shift the focus to wearable tech, lots of it in the market. How do smartwatches compare with uh, fitness bands? That's coming up right after. Also, luxury that you can walk on, the best rugs for your living spaces. <laughs>